Tesla's next generation of electric cars are coming potentially soon. It looks like by the end of 2026, they're going to have 10 minute fast charging with a new architecture, 6C charging, that is. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Thanks for tuning in. So guys, what is going on here? Well, in an interview with Peter Diamandis in late December that was just aired, uh, I believe, yesterday, Musk, he revealed new Tesla tech that has never been mentioned anywhere else. He actually talked about a few things. There's a new Tesla battery. We don't know what the actual cells in that battery are, but it's in the Tesla Model Y that was just revealed yesterday. But in this long-form interview, Elon revealed that Tesla's next-generation battery architecture is targeting 6C charging with an internal benchmark of 10 minutes to get from 10 to 80%. That single statement matters more than anything else he said, I think, probably, because that puts Tesla directly into Chinese EV territory. And that Tesla have no choice but to do this, by the way, because their Chinese rivals are doing it. And it matches the charging speeds we're already seeing from BYD, from Zika, from other Chinese EV manufacturers. It also explains why Tesla is suddenly obsessed with lighter battery packs. Now, this new battery in the Tesla Model Y that was revealed yesterday, it gives the Model Y 660 kilometers of range, more than 400 miles. It's about four, just under 410 miles of range, and it's only a 74 kilowatt hour battery. So get, getting back to the charging speed, 6C charging, what does that actually mean? I mean, in China, we hear this stuff all the time. It's got 4C charging, it's 5C, it's 6C. Someone even mentioned 10C one day. 6C charging simply means charging a battery at six times its total capacity per hour. On a typical 80 kilowatt hour battery, that means peak charging power of 480 kilowatt, a real world average of 330 to 350 kilowatt to hit 10 to 80% in 10 minutes. So that is probably going to be the charging speed maximum of Tesla's next generation cars, 500 kilowatt charging speeds, based on what Musk is saying, 10 minute charging is coming. And apparently it's actually gonna to come to the Cybercab first. So the first car will be the Cybercab. Then they're gonna actually bring it as well to, it's confirmed, the new Tesla Roadster, and obviously other vehicles as well, maybe the Cybertruck as well. Now, in this context, most Western EVs today operate at 2C or less, so around 30-minute charging. Tesla's current supercharging peaks around 250 kilowatt for all of its cars except for the Cybertruck. Meanwhile, Chinese brands like Zika and Xping and BYD, they're already deploying 5, 5C to 6C systems, in fact, even faster than that, with the new Zika 001, which has 1,200 kilowatt fast charging. So when Elon says this is Tesla's internal benchmark, what he's really saying is Tesla is no longer leading charging. It's catching up. This, Guys, this is not about convenience necessarily. It's about competitive survival from Tesla. And in China, consumers now expect in you know a lot of EVs, 10 to 15 minute charging. High efficiency, 800 volt, 900 volt, 1000 volt architecture, no compromises on performance. And Tesla sales in China were actually pretty good in 2025, but they did decline by about, I believe it was about 8%. Tesla cannot sell a RoboTaxi Future or a Roadster Halo car if the charging speeds look outdated next to its Chinese rivals. Really, can they? So that's why Elon Musk mentioned the benchmark in the context of the Roadster and the Cybercab. If autonomous vehicles are going to operate continuously, charging time becomes the bottleneck. You don't want them to be sitting there charging for a long time because then you're not making money. 6C charging isn't optional for that future. It's required. So my assumption is Tesla will use the Cybertruck architecture, the 800-volt Cybertruck architecture, and potentially um, modify that to enable even faster charging speeds. Now, we know the Cybertruck actually can peak at 500 kilowatt charging speeds, we've seen that, but it's not commonly available, or not commonly possible, I should say. Now, there's one other half to this story that Musk revealed. 
the part that most people have missed, in fact. In the same interview, Elon talked about weight reduction inside the battery pack itself. He specifically said Tesla is finding ways to shave 30 to 50 kilograms off battery packs by doing these three things. One, simplifying cooling manifolds. Two, reducing unnecessary complexity. And three, improving energy density through engineering, not chemistry alone. And that's why this new Tesla Model Y, which is the standard model, it's the cheapest Tesla Model Y ever sold in Canada and the cheapest Tesla Model Y ever sold in Europe. Why it has more range than any Tesla Model Y ever. So Tesla's already doing this stuff, just not really talking about it. Right now in Germany and many European countries, you can buy that standard Tesla Model Y for 45,000 euros. In Canada, you can buy it now for 49,990 Canadian dollars, meaning that's 36,000 US dollars. 36,000 US dollars in Canada for the longest range Tesla Model Y in history. Interesting. Now that battery pack, by the way, is a different battery. We don't actually know exactly what cells are in that battery. We just, we just know it's a new battery pack. Now, if you think about it, high, high C rate charging and heavy battery packs don't really mix, right? The heavier the battery pack, the harder it is to cool, the more thermal stress under fast charging, the lower the real world efficiency. So Tesla's push back toward lighter battery packs and away from lithium ion phosphate batteries is not cosmetic. Cosmetic, this is a not a lithium ion phosphate battery in this standard Tesla. So they've gone away from, not just in the United States, obviously, but also in Germany and Europe and Canada now, they've gone away from lithium ion phosphate and they're now using NMC batteries because they're lighter and more energy dense. So interesting what Tesla's doing here. Tesla's push towards lighter packs is not cosmetic. It's also required to make 6C charging viable at scale. So this suddenly explains something we've already seen in Europe, which was today, and that is the efficiency of this new Tesla Model Y. It has 12.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's not Chinese numbers for CLTC, that's WLTP, right? 12.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's the most efficient Tesla Model Y in history by a, a decent margin. It's significantly better efficiency than previous versions. Now I should mention, I believe it's got smaller wheels as well and that helps. But this lines up perfectly well with what Elon described in his interview with Peter, Peter Diamandis. The industry label for this new battery is it's called YB8LR. And this is basically confirming a lighter simplified battery higher usable efficiency, better thermal behavior, and compatibility with faster charging architectures. Now, unfortunately, this Tesla Model Y doesn't have these, this new architecture that Musk has talked about. That's first coming to robo-taxis and Tesla other general vehicles, I'd say probably in 2027. But Tesla is quietly testing its next generation battery philosophy in current production vehicles, not its architectures, but its battery philosophy. And you can clearly see that it's also learning from China, from some of its rivals in China. It's being pushed a little bit. Now, when you connect the dots, 6C charging, 10-minute charging, 10 to 80% in 10 minutes, uh, lighter battery packs, simplified cooling, and efficiency gains. And you're getting, a, guys, a pretty clear message here on what Tesla is doing over the next uh, 12 to 24 months. Tesla is no longer betting on chemistry breakthroughs alone. It's engineering its way back into relevance because Chinese EV makers have raised the bar. And this time, well, Elon hasn't overpromised. He's kind of described the benchmark, not an actual launch. So he's saying this is what we're going for, but he hasn't given any timelines on when it's going to happen, except for CyberCap. We know he has given a timeline on CyberCap. This does suggest Tesla knows how hard this is, though, to improve the efficiency to this level and to bring out this new 10-minute fast charging. 10-minute charging, guys, it isn't the future. It's the present. Um, it's very real. It's here now. Tesla knows it. They know they have to react, and it appears as though they are. The question now isn't if Tesla can hit 6C charging. The question is, when will it happen? It's whether it can do it at scale 
as well globally and before China pulls even further ahead. We're seeing new 1,000 volt architectures now becoming more common in China. That's the race that probably matters for them the most. That's the biggest car market in the world. So what do you guys think? Will this affect your buying decisions? Will this make you more or less likely to buy a Tesla car, knowing that they're about to change? Well, not about to. Um, we might be looking at 12 to 18 months away, but clearly there's some major, major changes coming. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Bye-bye. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery, or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.